The video discusses a series of natural disasters and unusual phenomena that occurred in different regions of China. These events include a tornado striking southern towns, earthquakes causing destruction and panic, unusual behavior of animals like swarming locusts and bats, peculiar sky and water phenomena, and even instances of insects behaving strangely. Devastating tornadoes, powerful earthquakes, and eerie natural phenomena have been wreaking havoc across China. Towns were razed, skies turned blood red, and swarms of locusts overtook fields. Amidst these horrors, questions arise about whether these events foretell the fall of the communist regime. Despite widespread suffering and skepticism, the government remains unmoved. As nature's fury continues, the nation's turmoil deepens, leaving many wondering about the future. A powerful tornado which hit southern towns and villages in Dafeng district, Yancheng Zhongs, caused destruction. Videos shared online depicted the fierce winds carrying debris, with a dark tornado column reaching from the ground to the ominous clouds. This created a terrifying scene, and initial information suggests casualties. Reports are verifying details about injuries, fatalities, and property damage. The China Meteorological Administration and Jiangsu Provincial Meteorological Bureau have classified the tornado as an F2 level, signifying moderate intensity. Additionally, on August 6, a strong earthquake measuring 5.5 struck Dezuo City in Shandong Province. This was the largest earthquake in the region in a decade, causing panic and building collapses. People ran out of the streets and gathered frighteningly. After the quake, swarms of swallows filled the sky in chaos in Biyang Hinan. To on August 9th, earthquakes shook Heze City in Shandong and Yaibin City in Sichuan. The night before, on August 8th, chaotic swarms of swallows were observed in Shandong. On the same day in Aijiang City near Suquan, swallows were acting nervously. These earthquakes followed the heaviest rainfall in Beijing's 140-year history. The authorities released floodwaters without warning to safeguard Beijing and downstream areas, leading to numerous casualties. Since late July, mainland China has been hit repeatedly by typhoons, floods, earthquakes, and other natural disasters. Unusual phenomena have also been witnessed before and after these calamities. Witness the astonishing scenes. Once calm waters are overshadowed by disaster, locusts cover everything, their layers appearing like leaves on a pole. A flood-stricken villager from the northeast shares a video, revealing a swarm of locusts in paddy fields. Nature's oddities continue. Stones seem to sprout, asphalt roads bear strange black bumps resembling seeds ready to grow. Bats, usually active at night, crawl in broad daylight, an eerie sight. In Guangdong province, a red glow pierces through clouds, perplexing many. Amidst these bizarre happenings, rivers and wells bubble unexpectedly in Hubei. A red moon adds to the eerie atmosphere, while the sky turns orange-red and pink, unsettling locals. Meanwhile, geese migrate unusually and desert floods block paths. Ants appear in mass, rivers bubble, and a strange tornado column emerges in Inner Mongolia. Springs burst forth with astonishing force, attracting crowds. In Beijing's forbidden city, flooding stuns, challenging its historic drainage. Amid these strange events, a U.S. scholar cites ancient wisdom. Nations in crisis face anomalies. This is evident as natural disasters and anomalies persist in China, potentially signaling the end of the communist regime. Despite these signs, leaders remain unrepentant. The Communist Party's construction of hospitals named after gods during the pandemic reveals their desperation. The public's growing distrust of the party's narrative, fueled by online mockery, suggests a reckoning looms. After two disastrous typhoons hit heavily on big cities, Chinese people has come to the distrust of the government. Chinese people realized CCP's purpose is to protect main cities such as Beijing and abandon surrounding cities and small villages. In fact, flood water is redirected to cities in Hebei province and then flows into the sea through Tianjin. Beijing has reservoirs that can release water for flood relief. Although the officials are able to warn before floods hit, they hesitate to announce and there's no warning or evacuation plan in advance. The floodwaters can be sudden and destructive. People are frustrated that the government doesn't notify them properly. Some areas are sacrificed to protect important places. A temple survived the flood, sparking thoughts about its meaning. People are dealing with the aftermath of flooding and shortages. Elderly and ill people struggle.
possessions matter less than health. As floodwaters begin to diminish, the situation may look like a disaster area slowly returning to normal, but in reality, it's the start of new agony for those who are coming back to the devastation. The streets are now free from floodwaters, but bear the scars, strewn with refuse left behind by the floods, numerous deceased animals, and even the bodies of people who lost their lives lying on the roadways. Fourteen individuals vanished, and some corpses haven't been found. Every heap of ashes stands for a human being. The ash-covered ones are those we've located, and digging continues without rest. This place was home to five family members, including my aunt, uncle, sister, and two nephews. This used to be my uncle's residence, where five generations lived together. They were closely related. I accept complete legal accountability for these videos. Those buried below are our cherished loved ones. Is it still possible to live in this home? What was once a pathway to terraced fields is now a visible ditch. How will we live in the days to come? Looking up from here, you can see our backyard mountain, completely overrun with landslides. Is life here still an option? Does human life still hold any worth? Shuasu officials reported on August 10th that the flood impacted 540,000 individuals, leading to 29 deaths and 16 missing persons. Yet, the post-flood conditions in the affected area greatly contrasted with the government's statements. This stark reality not only exposed the inaccuracies of the official media, but also revealed the Chinese government's concealments. The greatest concern following the disaster is the loss the victims face as they return home. They encounter yards filled with mud, waterlogged cars, destroyed walls and furniture, and personal belongings and clothes swept away by the floods. Many were moved to tears of sorrow, lamenting that their true suffering is just beginning. Some were so overwhelmed by the sight of their homes after the disaster that they couldn't hold back their tears. How is your home? My house was overwhelmed by deep water. An older sibling who narrowly reached land was separated from his family. Our existence relied on this truck, and then this tragedy occurred. If only we had been warned sooner, I could have moved the truck. I think about our truck every time I lay down to sleep. I have great affection for it. After the Zorwo flood, truck owner Ding Gixia was frantically searching for the vehicle registration in the mud-filled cabin to make an insurance claim. Three years earlier, Ding Gixia borrowed 150000 to purchase the truck and almost paid it off before the flood hit. Now, I can't find the registration. They're afraid to tow the truck in case the registration was washed away, and without it, the insurance company won't acknowledge the claim. How long have you been behind the wheel, Mom? I've been driving for over three years. I was diagnosed with cancer, and I bought this truck to keep myself occupied and earn a living. I had hopes of making money during the high season, but now it's impossible. The truck is ruined. I don't know what the insurance company will say, but I did fully insure it. Besides the personal loss, the Zhuoshu residents have also faced significant financial hardships in their individual businesses, dealing a heavy blow to the local economy. Numerous distraught entrepreneurs have expressed their despair online, saying things like, Flood took everything from me overnight. I invested all my savings in this tile store and now the flood has ruined it. What will I do now? Everything is gone. I put everything into this location. I've become the mainstay of this shopping center. If I collapse, others lose hope too. It's now an insurmountable challenge. Everything here is just what different stores have managed to clean out. The flood wiped out the homes that Joho's people relied on and devastated the last bastion of the county's economy. With a population of 650,000, the northern county turned into a massive sea overnight with incalculable financial losses. An internal source provided data detailing the estimated economic impact on businesses within Zhuoshu's economic development zone, including the China Shipbuilding Industry Corporation which faced an initial estimated loss of around 350 million. Another significant losses were reported by Central Iron Steel Research Institute. Zuhou Shou Base, Beijing New Building Materials, Suoshu Branch, Hebei Sinotape International Co., Beijing Aerospace, Sanfa High Tech X Sinrui Electromechanical Zuoshu Branch, Jintian Cloud Valley Information Technology. Wukuang Mingda Center, Wukuang Mingxin Center, and Zhongyi Mingqing projects, among others. 
Additionally, insiders reported that the local China National Petroleum Corporation in Zhuizhou suffered a substantial hit with a preliminary estimated direct loss of 800 million. Hebei Zhuizhou's floods also struck a heavy blow to the national cultural industry. Reports that Bookshina.com and hundreds of other book depositories have incurred losses in the hundreds of millions have been trending online. The founder of Bookshina lamented in an interview, All our savings vanished overnight. An hour and a half later, the water was half a meter high and we had already abandoned the effort to save the books, 80% of the books, all our savings over all these years, a quarter century of savings, are in this warehouse. What we must do now is figure out how to keep this business going. Besides the economic catastrophe, rural Hebezhoshu's agricultural land has also suffered severe damage. Netizens' videos reveal the devastating aftermath of the floods in Diaowu town, most fields are underwater, homes and greenhouses have been decimated by the floods, and pathways through the fields are obstructed by fallen trees and water. The footage shows walkways cluttered with debris and vehicles carried away by the flood. Under the rule of the CCP, authorities have prioritized safeguarding Beijing and Zhongan, neglecting the lives and well-being of the people in Hebezhuozhou. The floods have wiped away efforts that took decades or even generations to build. But houses have collapsed, and the neglect is evident. One voice laments, look, just look, nobody cares about us. The back is all flooded. You know, the children have nowhere to go. Do the children have clothes to wear? Everything got washed away, just these clothes. A cousin's child is left without clothing. The days of cleaning have done little to restore order. Residents are desperate to know when the nightmare will end. They're left to survey the twisted roofs, cracked walls, and overall destruction. Some cry out, brothers, a merciless flood stole my home. Look at this building. It's infuriating. It's sickening. Look at this house. How can anyone inhabit it? The water hasn't fully drained, and the house is already in this state. All the walls have cracked. As the water subsides and people return, the urgent question arises. How will they rebuild? and what measures are in place to ensure the survival of those struck by the disaster. According to official sources, compensation for the floods in Hebezoshuro will follow a guideline termed interim measures for compensation for the use of flood storage areas. Towns used as flood storage will have house damage compensated at 70 of water damage, while crops, specialized breeding, and economic forests will be compensated at varying rates based on the previous three years' average production value. For compensation for the loss of household farming equipment, livestock, and significant household goods will generally be 50 of water damage. The compensation announcement was met with ridicule and skepticism. Some netizens questioned the uniformity of the law standards, leaving the final compensation amount open to interpretation. Others argued that the situation warranted indemnity for damages rather than mere compensation and called for the waiving of loans on submerged cars and homes. Much of the scorn directed at the post-disaster compensation process in Hebei comes from experiences in Henan. A report released by the Henan Provincial Audit Office on July 28 revealed numerous corruption issues related to post-disaster reconstruction in Hebei. Misuse, embezzlement, poor quality, and violations in acquiring reconstruction funds after previous disasters have led to the disappearance of nearly tens of billions of funds. The situation in Hebei Zhuoshu, as captured in these videos, paints a distressing picture of loss, despair, neglect, and a complex struggle to rebuild amid a system that may not fully support those most in need. Party under the Chinese Communist Party (CCP) corruption has severely affected disaster relief efforts. Although substantial funds have been allocated to support flood control and relief in various regions, including a recent allocation of 146 billion yuan, the actual funds reaching the desperate people who need them are questionable. Previous incidents in provinces like Henan have resulted in misappropriation of funds and lined the pockets of officials instead of helping the victims. In Hebei's Zhohu, there is doubt that the 7.7 .7 billion yuan set aside for disaster relief will genuinely benefit those in need. The China Red Cross, a government-sponsored NGO that operates with support from the Communist Party, has also been embroiled in these issues. Recent events involving the Zhuoshu floods brought heavy criticism upon the organization.
Initially, while state media remained silent about the flooding, the Red Cross urged donations. However, netizens later uncovered questionable practices involving donations, such as a case where Beijing Wumu clothing to the Red Cross's executive board member donated clothing to the Red Cross. The situation appeared to be a scheme for gaining fame, laundering money, and setting a good example for donations. The China Red Cross has faced previous scandals, including inflated prices for tents during the Wenshuan earthquake, the Guameme incident that exposed internal corruption and discrepancies in donations during the COVID-19 outbreak. In the Zhuahu floods, their call for public donations was met with backlash and mockery. The corruption surrounding disaster relief funds and the scandals involving the China Red Cross highlight significant issues in governance and humanitarian efforts in China, resulting in an outcry from the public. The system seems to prioritize individual gain over the well-being of citizens, even in times of dire need, reflecting a troubling trend under the CCP's rule. The Natural Resources Department of the province warns that heavy rainfall from Typhoon Kanun increases the risk of geohazards like landslides, mudslides and mudflows in the eastern mountainous regions. Roads and highways are already restricted due to geological dangers. The Harbin section of the Songhua River is predicted to experience a flood peak on August 13, affecting Harbin City. Evacuations have been organized in some parts of the northeast. The flooding has destroyed crops, causing concerns about China's food production and security. The northeastern provinces, known for their grain production, have suffered severe crop losses due to floods and typhoons. The impact on agriculture raises worries about China's food supply for its large population. In recent years, China has shifted from being a net exporter to a net importer of food, increasing its reliance on imp This has led to concerns about the country's food self-sufficiency and security, with predictions that China's food self-sufficiency rate could further decline in the coming years. The recent sudden flood releases worsened the challenges for affected communities. Some officials downplayed reservoir releases and blamed heavy rainfall for the disaster. People questioned official explanations and the resilience of the Dragon King Temple amid destruction sparked discussions. Equal impacts on different regions were also questioned. After the catastrophe, survivors faced the daunting task of rebuilding lives. They realized health matters more than possessions, farms were ruined, affecting livelihoods for years, poorly constructed houses were destroyed, leaving people homeless, neglected reservoirs failed, worsening flooding. Multiple typhoons and heavy rainfall continued to bring destruction, with the threat of more floods looming. The ongoing disasters raised concerns about rising water levels and further flooding. In this reality, since the Tiananmen Square massacre, Communist leadership's faith in communism wanes. The party clings to power while the truth spreads on platforms like TikTok. The mockery of CCP leadership suggests those in power realize change is imminent. We are trying to discover secret stories and hidden shadows of the government's decision. There are heartbreaking pictures shed light on horrifying actions of CCP, and we want to uncover. If you are interested in our reports, please subscribe to follow us with the latest updates.